this time around we're very fortunate to have this very unusual specimen. This is a Bang & Olufsen Video Center AV5 CRT television. It debuted in 1997 and was discontinued approximately in the year 2001. What you see here is not simply a TV on its stand, but it is actually part of the stand. It does not detach at all. The unit stands at about one meter tall. You can see that silvery disc at the bottom. It actually rotates. It has a motorized mechanism inside that causes the television to rotate. It has a lot of tricks up its sleeve and I intend to show you all of those in this video. I have another video on a Bang & Olufsen, the BO Vision Avant 2, which is very similar to this. It's actually a widescreen um, type rather than a 4.3, which this is. And I suggest you stick around because this is actually superior to that other model. It's available in six different colours. This one is the Perlescent Black. Black would be the most common colour, undoubtedly. Pretty much the standard TV colour. Uh, the others are um, all pearlescent in appearance and uh, much more striking than the black, I suppose, or, or a bit more unusual given that they're not black. I'm going to take the camera off the stand and go around the television. And um, we'll have a look. Like I said, it's very unusual in its feature set. The rotation is just the start. Up here we actually have a built-in CD player and I'll go into that more shortly. I'll just open the shed door here so I can get some room to give you a side showing, side profile. It's actually very, fairly narrow. It's thick up in the CRT area up in the top but quite slender at the bottom. over here on the back. There's actually no buttons on the front. We have controls here at the back and some inputs. The controls are labelled here at the top. So you've got load, CD, radio, sat, TV, play timer and the power button which is that white dot. There's a red light illuminating that's on standby right now. So there is power going into the TV but it's not turned on. There are the buttons that belong to the name labels just spoken. And we have a set, an input set there. You can plug your phones in and plug in composite and audio left and right, and also in this video there. Uh, these other two are part of something something greater. Input one and input two, mini dins. I'll talk about those more a bit shortly. Over here you actually have a little plastic piece that pulls out. I don't know why this is so. It simply gives you access to the CD mechanism there but it's not user uh, adjustable at all and I don't know why I don't know why that actually can come off. It's very strange. Some of a viewer might know better. Down here we have the label. Now this thing debuted in 97 but it was built in 96 if my Roman numerals are correct there. BO Center AV5. You can see AUS for Australia. It's a genuine Australian unit made in Denmark. 220 to 240 volts in. And you've also got the label over there, the Class 1 laser product that you used to see on all CD based systems, and you probably still do see it on all optical drive systems somewhere. We've got to get down to business here now. Being a European TV, Bang & Olsen always have scarts in the back. And if the lighting's good enough, you can see that there's actually a triple scar, which is pretty unusual when you consider that the TV size is only 59 centimeters. Like that's a lot of a lot of scarred inputs for such a small TV. But we are talking B and O here, and they are pretty lavish. Further down, you've got the I think that's the Master Link input connector that enables this TV to be hooked up to other Bang & Olufsen TV uh, other B&O devices throughout the household so you could play a CD on the unit here and transfer it through to some speakers in another room and you've got your antenna in and out and there's also some other labels there some other areas that can be cut out to expand the input or output it's available on the TV satellite type stuff 
down here you've got the actual power button the on off button that's on the on position now it's flush fitting with the back of the unit when it's turned off it'll pop out a little bit and there's the power input standard figure eight removable cable quite nice should make mention of how much this thing retailed for back in the day uh, it cost four and a half thousand pounds approximately on debut and the previous owner told me that it cost here in Australia around ten thousand dollars they made a guess of either ten or fifteen but I think ten would probably be more more likely the remote is the BO4 the uh, the very expensive BO4 these remotes are still worth a lot of money today often more so than the TVs that they came with this is the Mark 1 version uh, the newer Mark 2's and Mark 3's have some different label uh, namings but um, I do believe that this is still compatible with B&O devices that are coming out today so that's why I think it does retain a lot of its value um, it has an LCD screen which would have been quite advanced for its time back in 1994 this remote debuted and it's quite heavy, very solid. It's made of metal. It's actually made of zinc with the intention that the zinc um, draws away the heat of the hand to keep the remote cool so it doesn't get clammy at all. Um, so it is, it's winter time here now while I'm filming this video and it is quite cold to the touch because of that, because of that zinc uh, metal. But it's, um, it's quite a nice remote. And there is a little trick you can do. I'll just show you while I've got it. If you press menu, see the go button in the center there and menu if you press those two together at the same time and then press list you have AV5 and if you scroll down let me see if I can get it to do it now I'll have to try it again go and menu and then list there they see that EE 3.2 and go across I think there's a way to scroll through that list again. Yeah, SW 3.0. That's something to do with the revision of the remote. It's either the software or the actual version of the remote. I'm not sure, but that's just a little trick that you can perform on the remote. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back off, which uses Torx. Pretty much a type of Torx security screw. Not sure if strictly speaking it is Torx, but it's fairly easy to remove, so it's no problem at all. Let's take the camera off and I'll get into that now. The back cover is off, there's the inside of it. Here it is, there's quite a lot going on in this thing. So what I haven't mentioned yet, and is really the most important thing, is that the unit here, the CD player specifically, is capable of running CDI discs. If you don't know what the CDI is, go and check it out. It was co-created by Sony and Philips. I think Philips really is the main player behind the CDI format. They released a media box in the early 90s that plays CDI discs, which have um, video and sound on them. And the CDI player was touted as a game console for a while, but failed miserably. But in fact, this Bang & Olufsen unit here does play CDI discs, which is quite remarkable. So essentially it has a console built inside of it. And it's one of those very unusual television console variants that are out there. Alright, so what we've got here is a U-shaped chassis. Three PCBs there forming the, the U of sorts. Um, look, you've got a battery on the board there. It's already pretty unusual. It is. There's our three scarts from before. Um, heaps of cabling, quite a lot of cabling. You've got what appears to be an amp on the side here. There's actually for the left speaker and or for the right speaker, correctly speaking, and there's another amp as well. It looks like you've got two separate amps to drive the speakers. There's a, there is a third speaker down the bottom here, a woofer. Might be a four inch woofer there on the bottom. There's our power button before, before from before. Uh, figure eight um, power input again but there's also a din on there I didn't notice that before I don't know what that's for whether it's a service socket or possibly in connection with um, the CDI I don't know I haven't identified which PCBs are the CDI I don't know but, um, there is a lot going on in here uh, the CD spindle unit is in there 
and um, it actually didn't work when I picked up the TV and I I have a feeling that it's quite a common failure on these models and I had to chase down a replacement I got an aftermarket one and put it in and it does work the old one didn't work the CDs didn't spin so I suspected the laser was kaput I got the replacement one put it in and it works fine fingers crossed and I'm quite happy that it did because if that CD playing aspect of the TV didn't work I probably wouldn't have made a video at all it just wouldn't have been worth showing without that CDI function in it um, you've got the flyback transformer there and its adjustments screen and focus there and um, probably wondering what brand of tube is inside this thing if you've seen my other B&O television reviews you'd probably guess it was a Philips and you'd be right and yet again B&O are covering up the um, label on the tube there you can see the sticky tape at the top there they've got a black piece of paper hanging over the tube's details if I just pull that up there we go it's a Philips tube A59 59 centimeters in size made in France so there you go um you know I just I just think it's <coughs> B&O just wanting to hide the fact that they've got a Philips like low, uh, in quotes lowly Philips tube inside their very expensive televisions I mean Philips make good stuff but it's I just don't like the fact that they hide the fact that um, that it has got a Philips tube in it but that's their decision anyway I'm going to put the back cover on it and we're going to crank this thing up now oh actually I should mention one more thing too the um, the speakers the the tweeters are located down here and on the other side as well they're actually motorized in the fact that the speaker comes out to the side and I'll show you that right now once I put the back on firstly I'm going to test out the CD player so what we'll do is press um, the load button here which will open the CD mechanism just like that it's very impressive it's extremely like it's very quiet the mechanism and very smooth moving it's um, good quality the um, sprockets inside are all metal so I think that gives it that that quality rather than just plastic and you'll even notice that there are um, lights there in the mechanism or there on the other side as well as soon as the CD part of the TV is activated it lights up like that and then we can push load and it'll shut and you're probably wondering why well, what's going on the disc sort of like hanging out in the air and that is that's normal that is actually normal the disc will start rotating as is that's very unusual TV still is what somewhat on standby I'm gonna push CD on the remote CD to get the CD part working but I want to film the TV because it's gonna it's gonna turn on more somewhat it's gonna the, the speakers are gonna come out and it might even actually rotate oh yes it's rotating there we go speakers come out oh it's pretty loud it's hard to tell that the disc's spinning but it is So what we've got here up here on the displays, multiple displays, is the volume level, or the track that's playing and the volume when I change it. And this other bar here is um, telling me how many tracks are on the disc. It's got a dedicated display for telling me how many tracks are on the disc. It goes up to 25 in numbering. Um, it will play CDs with more tracks than that, obviously, but it goes up to 25 on the display and it's currently playing track two there and as you'd expect it's got all the typical features like fast forwarding and you can actually type in specific track you want to go to I'll make it track 18 no. I'm fast enough oops there we go 18 it does go quite loud I haven't actually turned it up to full volume but um, let's see, I'll, I'll give it a bit of kick. Fuck, it's loud. The 
We're starting to distort somewhat at 70. That's as far as I was willing to go. It might even go further than 70. That was just a bit too much for my liking. The TV, the actual tube itself hasn't turned on yet. Because CD functioning, it doesn't need to. Um, the TV has a radio as well. For some reason, I can't tune it in. I don't know if you need to have the antenna plugged in like the television antenna. Because I don't see any other type of antenna at all. Now, if I switch to TV, it'll stop playing the music. And the screen should come on very shortly. There we go. Sort of opens up, the curtains open up. So it's on regular TV right now. If I go into the menu, I want to show you the stand. Go down to stand, enter that. So you've got a picture on the screen of this of the of range of of movement that it's got. I estimate it's about 40 degrees movement, so it doesn't have a huge amount. It's in center at the moment, but watch this. It's rotating. Oh, it's got a fair way. You can see on screen that it should be, yeah, it's gone to two. Come on, keep going. Three. Four, five. So that's about middle there. That's where I'll have it. I can go back to CD at any time. That'll be exactly where I left off. The CDI game I'm going to put on is really the game or a part of a series of games that made the CDI famous and this first one is Link the Faces of Evil so this is Link from the Zelda games by Nintendo there are a few let's say licensed by Nintendo games on the CDI Hotel Mario and this is another Zelda game um, they're not really much chop but they have given notoriety to this system for this reason so I'll load that disc I'll shut, get it shut like that and then I'll press go on the remote in a moment to get things going. You'll see the speakers come out. Very quietly they do. CRT is pairing up. I can hear static. around here my boy this piece is what all true warriors strive for i just wonder what ganon's up to your majesty ganon the clarity of the video is actually quite good and this does beg the question this is the first question that always comes to my mind whenever there's a console built into a television does the console display an rgb you would think that yes would be the answer it should be definitely um, personally, I think that this is probably an S video. Uh, it doesn't have the dot crawling like composite images usually do, but it doesn't have the clarity of RGB. Even though the video here is pretty good, I think that's more to do with the codec. Uh, I think the FMV capability of the CDI is probably pretty good, so I think that's what gives the clarity here. But 
I just don't think it's RGB, to be honest. Um, hey, want to fight the forces of evil in Koridai? Check it out. It's easy. Oh, this is a tutorial that the game has. See? But I'm going to turn off Link here. I might put on a different game just quickly. I'll just show you as when I turn the TV off. Just a nice little feature I noticed before. Then click button one and flash. When things power off, the uh, so-called curtain closes on the screen and the speaker shut at the same time. It's a nice little touch. You watch the speakers go in as the, as the curtains close. And the volume nice and softly decreases too, so it's a, quite a nice touch that Beano have put there on the TV. Right, so I've done some testing. SCART Socket 1, the one on my left here, accepts RGB. The next one in the middle accepts RGB. And the last one doesn't seem to accept any signal into it, but it will pass composite video out, which I've got happening right now and I'll show you more about that shortly so I've got just about every socket occupied with some cable plug of some sort so you can see the scarts there I've got the NES hooked up via RF there's the RF adapter and I've got up here a PlayStation 1 hooked in via S video and I fail uh, I failed to completely mention what these two sockets here are for they are in fact the uh, control pad ports for the CDI input 1 and input 2 they correspond to CDI units that have input 1 and input 2 and you can plug in your pointing devices, mice, control pads so forth and you can play the games more comfortably than with the B&O remote via a pad through the socket there in front of us unfortunately I don't have any other CDI hardware to test that feature out but B&O have not skipped over any steps to give you the full CDI experience so let's turn it on and start playing some games now I'm ready to turn on now the TV and uh, down the bottom there I've got a little LCD TV that's taking the output of the B&O into itself so whatever's on the screen the B&O should be on the LCD as well first console I'm going to put on is the NES that's down there powered on so I'm going to put it on to channel 1 Turn the TV on. Here come the speakers. Okay. You may have guessed why well, I've got Duck Hunt on, and that's to play or we'll try the gun. See if it works alright. Yep, gun works. That's a good sign. I can confidently say that the TV has no image processing, no 100 hertz shenanigans going on. I haven't seen any artifacts. The gun works fine, so it's a big tick in favour of the TV there. Let's go to the CDI. I can flick over. And it'll start loading up the CD that's in the drive. Let's see if it passes through to the bottom or right as well. Yep. So the CDI is on its way. And we can change back to TV at any stage. Get Duck Hunt. And then we can go back to the CD. Uninterrupted. So that's a normal thing you'd expect out of a television. But that's sort of where, where it stops in regards to changing inputs. Now I'm not a B&O connoisseur, I don't know the ins and outs of how B&O TVs work. But my understanding is if I want to say play the PlayStation now that I've got hooked up I have to turn the console on and then the TV will automatically change and display the PlayStation it's graphics and picture, that's fine. And then if I want to play another console I have to power it on and it will automatically change channel. The problem is though, once you've turned all your consoles on, how do you change between them? Because I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it with a remote. The only way I 
that you can do it is either by turning the console off again and then on or pulling the SCAR cable out and pushing it back in. As far as RF and the CDI is concerned, sure, you can switch between them at any stage, no problem. Anyhow, I'll demonstrate. So I'll put the PlayStation 1 on, and it's hooked in by RS video. Up it comes, no problems, it's getting relayed to the bottom TV, fine. And then let's say I want to go to PlayStation 2, which is RGB. In one of the scarts there, right, there's the mod chip screen there. For the PlayStation 2. And then if I want to go to the Mega Drive, I'll turn the Mega Drive on. Bang, it changes. So that's great. That's all good and well. But if I wanted to change channels between these consoles now, how do I do it? I don't know how you do it with a remote. Now it's got a funny thing here. It's um it's not full screen, it's gone into widescreen mode. And a lot of SCAR TVs do that. And you can change them into um, full screen. That's no problem. This one's a little bit different in the sense that the image is not letterboxed typically like widescreen modes are. Normally you've got a black bar at the top and a black bar at the bottom, but this actually puts, by the look of it, both black bars at the bottom and then shifts the picture up. So that's unusual, but no problem. It's in 4.3 now, no issue at all there. The only other thing too is that there is a bit of a bar on the right side of the screen there. I'd need to get into the service menu and shift it across to um, get it centered properly, but that shouldn't be an issue with the service menu adjustment. The RGB doesn't actually look too bad at all. Uh, it's pretty clean. So that's pretty much the, the look at the Beano Bio Center AV5. Um, a very unusual specimen. And it is quite rare, it's very uncommon. The widescreen versions are far more common, but the widescreen is a different model. It's not, doesn't have CDI function uh, playability in it at all. I have heard that later versions of this very TV had the CDI part omitted out of it, so you might want to watch out for that. And you definitely want to test to see if the CDI is working. Uh, I just have a feeling that they do not have long lives, so. Uh, it might be pretty tough to actually find the TV and find one that's working properly, but I'm I'm quite happy to have at least got a video of this captured while it's going, and so that everyone can see it. So if, you know, it's a pretty pretty niche sort of a thing, very um, very unusual. Maybe for the hardcore console collectors that want all the variants, and maybe for the B and O collectors that want B and O uh, merchandise products, it could be the way to go. But anyhow. Um, thank you for watching and stay tuned because there are still a lot more CRTs that I, I want to show that I've got to make videos of. So thank you for your patronage and see you next time. Bye.